In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a factor analysis, an exploratory factor analysis in M+. I'm going to keep it very basic. There are actually quite a few options you can select and specify in an exploratory factor analysis in M+. But as I am not an expert in this, I'm just barely learning how to do M+. Um, I'm going to keep it very basic, very simple, and just show you how to run one and where, uh, where to look in the output file. So let's go over to M+. And what we want to do is, like before, just copy our syntax to get started, and then click New, and paste this in here, and just change a few things. So let's change this title to EFA, and we're going to use the same file, the same variables, because it's the same file, and we're going to specify something different here. Just like in our regression, we're going to say, as part of the variables, we're going to say, I uh, use variables. And um, let's see, R, use variables R. And then we're going to specify which variables we actually want to use. Because we don't need to do this for all of them. In fact, I only need to do it for um, these ones right here from the beginning play down through that, uh, through use seven. I don't need that last line. So I'm going to copy that. I would never attempt to just type that in because guaranteed I would make a mistake. Also, don't forget to add the semicolon at the end of those variables. Um, otherwise, it'll get confused and throw you another error. And the analysis type is no longer basic. Uh, the analysis type is EFA. So let's get rid of basic, replace it with EFA. And we can specify how many factors to extract as a range. So we could say extract anywhere from 1 to 5. Or we can narrow it up a little bit. You can see what we want. We only want four factors. That's what we're expecting. But in order to be accommodating and look uh, below and above the expected number, let's do 3 space 5. That will give us 3, 4, and 5. Uh, factor models and it's quite a bit of output but I'll show you how to navigate and that's it actually it's fairly straightforward let's save that and I'm going to call this M plus EFA and we'll click on run it runs and here's the output here we go it gives you some metadata which variables were used it went with the um, I guess we should talk about this briefly. Uh, it uses the maximum likelihood estimation and geomin rotation. Uh, those are the defaults. You can change those if you'd like. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Maybe I'll make a more complex video uh, later on that shows you how all the different things you can change. So um, let's scroll down. Some descriptive statistics, including skewness and kurtosis on everything and model fit information. All right, now, uh, let's see, if, if I scroll up, here we go, okay. So model fit information here uh, for the three, four, and five factor model. Notice uh, it does provide all three models here. And uh, we want, in this very strict criteria, we want a um, p-value that is greater than 0.05. We're not getting that, but again, that's a very strict model fit uh, metric. More stuff here. I'm going to skip. It shows you the eigenvalues for however many factors it extracted. Typically, we want to see eigenvalues greater than 1. You'll notice here we have 5 that have eigenvalues greater than 1, even though we were only expecting 4. So we're going to be a little bit surprised. I'm glad we did a 5-factor model just to see. Um, let's scroll down. All right, here it is for the three-factor model. You can see here it specifies three-factor model. Um, and what we want to look at is a few things. Um, first off, the model fit. Is the model fit good? Um, in this case, we want the RMSEA less than 0 0.06. Uh, some say 0 0.05. It is not, so three factors maybe not great. The CFI and TLI both above 0 0.9. Ideally, uh, we're not getting that. The, RSM, or the SRMR should be less than 0.08. It is, so that's good. Um, but we weren't expecting a three-factor model anyway. 
here's the rotated pattern matrix, and what we see is um, what we see is the starred loadings are the significant ones, and we would hope that they would separate, right? Uh, but in a three-factor model, it's having to compress two of those factors into one. Um, so three factors is no good. Let's go to the four-factor model. Um, oh, and here's the factor correlation matrix here. Um, and we want to see th uh, factor correlations less than 0.7, which we do see. That's a sign of discriminant validity. Okay. Keep scrolling. Let me go like this. Sorry, there's a lot of scrolling. More information, and more information. Let's get down to the four-factor model. Keep on going, there's a lot of output. Here we go, four-factor model. Model fit again. Uh, we could compare the AIC and BIC. Uh, we want to minimize those values. Um, so whichever model has the lowest would be considered the most fit according to that metric. Uh, we could look at the RMCA again. We want less than 0.06. We're getting closer. That's 0.07. The CFI and TLI are above 0.9 this time, so that's good. And the SRMR should still be good. It is. Um, here's that rotated pattern matrix. Um, and this looks better. As you can see, these loadings, uh, except play 4 and play 6, which had those weird negative 99 missing values on them, uh, they look good. And if we look over here to info, it loads pretty cleanly. You can see there are some low loadings and some cross loadings with uh, factor two. Oops, sorry. And um, essentially what we're looking for here is uh, we want strong loadings on the home factor. If we don't see strong loadings on the home factor, then there's a problem. Uh, just like EFA and SPSS. If you'd like more info on uh, all the criteria for discriminant convergent validity and reliability during an EFA, go see my video on um, an EFA in SPSS. But we're looking not too shabby. Um, just for the sake of comprehensiveness, let's scroll down to the five factor model. Keep on going. Did I skip it? Here it is five factor model. And where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Here we go. Okay, RMSEA is less than 0.06, almost. It's 0.065, pretty close. Uh, TFI is looking better. CLI or T CFI, TLI looking better. SRMR looking fabulous. Um, let's see what it did for our, our pattern matrix here. And what it separated out. Really, what I'm looking for is what is significant on that fifth factor because um, we were only expecting four factors. And you see here that the only thing significant on the fifth factor is uh, a few of the decision quality um, items, but even those loadings aren't fabulous. So what we may end up doing is dropping decision quality six or something like that, um, because it has higher loading off of its home factor than on its home factor. And then we also see use seven over there and use one over there. So. Things to look at, things to consider um, if you were to separate out that fifth factor um, or delete the items that load on that factor. But that's how you run an EFA um, in M. Whoops, I wish I could see my mouse. It is hiding, even though you can see it, I can't see it. Um, anyway, you can go and keep looking at all this output. It's a lot of output. But that's how you run an EFA in M. Hope that's helpful.